morning students myself ramya hope you all are doing good and have watched the video of chapter 1 that is food of subject science in chapter 1 i discussed about the importance of food different variety of food materials and also sources of food materials i also discussed with you about the different parts of the plant that we can eat and we also categorize the animals into three different groups according to the food items that they eat they were herbivores carnivores and omnivores so we move further and go to the next chapter that is components of food in first chapter we discussed about as i told you different food items and what materials or ingredients they are made of as you all know that a meal consists of different food items for example meal 1 it consists of chapati dal vegetable curry now we'll take another type of meal which consists of rice sambar and bindi curry our meals usually have at least one item made of some kind of grain grain means examples of grain i can give is rice wheat jowar bajra so any of this one kind of grain we usually take in a day in any of our meals other items that we take with the grain is dal or vegetables our meal could also include items like curd buttermilk and pickles now we know that when we are traveling we have to eat whatever we get on the way so sometimes we will not be able to eat such a variety of foods at that time right when we are traveling we are not able to get the food that we eat at our home whatever we get when we are traveling we have to adjust with that type of food as you all know that different types of food items are required by our body for carrying out different functions in our body so each and every food item has a special purpose so you can see in the picture below that there are so many different types of food items for example chapati rice dal vegetables sabzi or curry curd so these all things we take at in a day at different time right now the next topic is what do different food items contain the different food items contain different nutrients as i told in the first chapter the and we have also learned in class 5 the different nutrients that we require right so the different nutrients as you all know is carbohydrates proteins fats vitamins and minerals so different food items contain different nutrients now what are nutrients nutrients are the components which are contained in the ingredients of the food items that we eat which is needed by our body to do work so nutrients are required or required or used by our body to do different functions in our body now other than this nutrients food also contain dietary fibers and water which are also needed by our body now all the food items do not contain all the nutrients some food items may contain one only one nutrients some may contain two nutrients but they but a food item will not contain all the five nutrients right so we will now we'll conduct different tests to know which kind of nutrient is present in which ingredient or which food item now while in the further slides i will show you how we have to conduct the tests these conducts these tests we will conduct in the school once the school opens right so 
To conduct the tests, we require solutions of iodine, copper sulfate, caustic soda and also a few test tubes and a dropper. The first test we'll do of carbohydrates and it is present in the food in the form of starch and sugar. So carbohydrates that you consume, the carbohydrates, the nutrients that we consume is present in the food items in the form of starch and sugar. Now first is the test for starch. So what all things you require? You have to take a small quantity of the food item, for example a potato and cut it into two parts. Then you have to put two to three drops of iodine solution on the part which you have cut. The place where we put the iodine solution will turn blue black in color which indicates that potato contains starch. So from this test we can conclude that on putting an iodine solution on a food material if its color changes to blue black then that food material contains starch. So the test which shows that a food item contains starch is that that food items color must change to blue black when you put a iodine solution into it. Next is the test for protein. Take the food material in the powdered form or paste form. For example dal, you have to take dal and crush it and form it into a powder. right? Now put that powdered form into a test tube then add 10 drops of water to it and shake the test tube very well. Now using the dropper add 2 drops of copper sulfate solution and 10 drops of caustic soda solution and shake it well and let the solution rest for few minutes. After some time if the content in the test tube turns to violet color then it indicates the presence of proteins. So from this test we can conclude that the violet color indicates the presence of proteins in a food item. Now the next text test will go to is fats. Now in fats test you have to take a food item for example you can put some drops of oil on a piece of paper right. Now hold that paper in against the light. So what you can see is you can see through that part where the oil is present very faintly not clearly but somewhat you can see through that part of the paper. So this oily patch on the paper shows that the food item contains fat. So we did the test for three nutrients that is carbohydrates, proteins and fats and we saw that each food item contains one or other type of nutrients. Now what do the various nutrients do for our body? So the next topic is what do they do when they go inside our body through the food items, right? So carbohydrates and fats provide energy to our body. So they are called energy giving foods. Now this important point that you have to remember is fats give us much more energy as compared to the same amount of carbohydrates. What the sentence means that if you take one bowl of rice and one bowl of butter or cheese then the cheese that you consume that will give you more amount of energy as compared to that one bowl of rice. Proteins are needed for the growth and repair of a body. Right? So, every day we grow some, each and every part grows, right? In our body. So, that growth is because we are taking proteins 
through the different food items and as you all know that when you get hurt that hurt is repaired the new skin comes in right that is the repairing of a body that repairing of the body is possible because we are taking proteins through food items and this proteins help in repairing our body so they are called body building foods vitamins help in protecting our body against diseases right so what does the vitamins do when the germs try to enter into our body they do not allow the germs to enter inside our body and cause diseases so this is how they protect our body against diseases now there are one more function other functions of vitamins is that they help in keeping our eyes bones teeth and gums healthy now i'll show you some sources of all the nutrients that is carbohydrates fats and proteins now the sources of carbohydrates you can see in this picture is pulses nuts cereals potatoes oil seeds maize sugar vegetables yes so these all are the different types or the different sources of carbohydrates these are the food items from which you can get carbohydrates next this picture shows you the sources of protein now in this you can see different types of pulses fish cheese then uh, milk groundnut egg yes these are the different sources of protein these are the different sources of protein now next we'll move on to the sources of fat so these are the food items which will provide you high in high uh, format fat right foods which are high in fat fatty meats and fish cheese butter avocado nuts and seeds chocolates these are the rich sources of fat right so so in this uh, in today's class we have studied about the different tests of nutrients which are the different which are the five nutrients what are the tests to determine that which food item contains which type of nutrients then we discuss the different food items from which we will get these different types of nutrients then we discussed what does this nutrients do for our body why are they so important in our body now as the chapter still remains there are few more topics that we have to discuss so i'll continue with the other topics of this chapter in the next class hope you all have understood what we discussed in today's class thank you